Welcome back to Through the Ringer. We're here with Steven Ruiz, and we got to talk sophomore quarterbacks. Uh, there's usually the the novel term of a sophomore slump. Sometimes there's a sophomore bounce back. In the case of the greatest case, Peyton Manning, he did not look good his rookie year, then looked great uh, moving forward. But we're going to talk expectations for these guys. Let's start with my guy, Bryce Young. They called him the Steph Curry of the NFL. I don't know what it means. I never will know what it means, but it is provocative, and it does get me going. Uh, Bryce Young, over under touchdown 17 and a half over or under Steven Ruiz how do you feel about him in year two I'm a Panthers fan so this pains me to say this but I'm going under oh man I'm going under and it's the reason we're running the ball it's because we're running the ball right that's that's why that <laughs> okay, is why I, I I think a lot of touchdown totals get determined by how you call plays in the red zone like a lot of passing touchdowns happen in the red zone and if you are going to be a run first team with Dave Canales claims he's going to be I think they're going to run a lot like, I would go under on Anthony Richardson. I don't want to spoil like, <laughs> a prop from later in the segment, but I would go under on him because I think they're going to use him as a battering ram, kind of like how Carolina used Cam in his prime, which I'm still salty about. I think Cam could have played like five more years if they didn't do that. But that's why I'm going to go under. I think they're going to run the ball down there. And I do think his size limitations show up the most in the red zone. Because I think that's where you really have to have a clear picture of what you're seeing. And I don't think he has that. And it's harder to get outside the pocket in those situations. So I could see him getting up to 17. But I just don't see him like putting up monster numbers like 25, 26 touchdowns. Yeah, I, d- I think he's going to have a better year, though. And I hope so. Because Bryce Young is one of the nicest, best guys around. So you, you hope for good good things to happen to guys like that. C.J. Stroud was the number two pick in that draft with Bryce Young. Uh, his total was 26 and a half. He is the darling. Everybody loves the Houston Texans and C.J. Stroud. Do we like over or under there for Stroud? I'm going to go over. I'm going to buy into the hype. I've kind of been trying to push back against the Texans hype, but like internally, <laughs> I just can't. Like, yeah. I'm like, I, I, yeah. I, I, I went to Maryland. I'm, right. I, I, I went to Maryland. I'm a Stefan Diggs fan. He's there now. I think Stefan Diggs still has a lot in the tank. And then, like, every time I watch CJ Stroud, he gets, be- like, he, he gets better. The games aren't changing. Like, I'm watching in June, but when I go back and watch it again, I'm like, oh, I missed that. Like, he was even better than I thought. I think the sky's the limit with him. Like I said earlier, he could be a top five quarterback at the end of this season. But, like, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some growing pains. Mm. Like, this wasn't the best offense last year. It wasn't the best defense last year. They really won that division because the Jaguars kind of imploded down the stretch. So I do think there are question marks. I do think they need to take bigger strides than maybe we are letting on about during the offseason just because they have had a flashy offseason. But C.J. Stroud is at the bottom of the list of concerns there. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's everybody's guy this year. Let's talk about Will Levis in Tennessee. His number is 18 and a half. We're going to go over under. Do we think that Will Levis has a great second year? This might be my most shocking answer. I'm going over. Okay, I like it. I'm becoming a Will Levis guy. I was kind of there during the draft process. I wrote a story last year about him before right. the draft. I talked to his offensive coordinator at Kentucky. I, like I, I get why his numbers weren't great at Kentucky that last last year, and I get why people have their question marks about him, but the talent is there, and if you could put him in the right offense, just put him in a play action offense where he just has to point and shoot, he could be a really productive player. Like if you put him in a Shanahan offense, which I think Tennessee is trying to recreate, they obviously hired uh, Brian Callahan from Cincinnati, who coached under Sean McVay. That's similar system. I think it could work out. And that's the system he thrived in when he was at Kentucky under Liam Cohen. It was the Sean McVay system. So I wouldn't be surprised if you get like 23 touchdowns from this guy this year. Yeah, Will Levis is a gamer. Uh, I, I like the way he approaches the game. Last one, you mentioned him earlier, Anthony Richardson, 17 and a half. I also agree with you. Cam Newton's shoulder, they should have protected it. Uh, but that's a different conversation. 17 and a half touchdowns for Anthony Richardson. He said the NFL is easy. Uh, you know, during a Club 520 podcast interview, I thought that was great. Uh, we going over or under year two for Anthony Richardson. Yeah, the NFL is easy when you're not playing Georgia with like future <laughs> UPS drivers protecting you. Right. Funny how that works. But I'm going to go under, and it's for the same reason I talked about the red zone thing. He's going to be the red zone back. And maybe that will change because Jonathan Taylor is available now, and he didn't get to play with Jonathan Taylor last year. Knock on one, hopefully that is the case and he stays healthy. But I do see him getting like 10 rushing touchdowns at least, even if they do try to protect him. I could see him having like a 15 touchdowns passing type of season and then 10 mm. touchdowns rushing and going like 25 to 30 touchdowns total. But I'm going to take the under on 17 and a half just because of play calling. Yeah, I do like that. Uh, and I like his threat as a dual threat guy. And uh, shout out to Danny Heifetz. The fantasy guys will be all over Anthony Richardson. So we'd love to see that. Steven, where can we find all your work? And then we'll let you go enjoy your weekend. 
You can find me on the ringer. You can find me on Twitter at the Steven Ruiz. Actually, don't go look up the the quarterback rankings because all <laughs> I get is hate hate responses when they people look it up. So don't look at those. <laughs> yeah, avoid those at all costs. We appreciate you coming <laughs> on the show, Steven. We'll have you back. And joining us after the break, we'll have John Jastrzemski. We'll see you on the other side.